stopped in Waterbury, Vermont. It was already on the way from Burlington to Stowe, but I heard it's a great area. I didn't stay for long, only to see the Ben & Jerry's Flavor Graveyard. Because I've heard of it before, I do love their ice cream. Ben & Jerry told me I could do this. Their full names are Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield. They met in seventh grade gym class. No business experience or education. They took a $5 ice cream correspondence class. They set up shop in a renovated gas station in Burlington, Vermont. Anyway, I was walking up to this graveyard and there are some people outside and I'm like, oh, I thought no one would be here. So I'm just, you know, trying to be polite. One of them catches my eye and smiles, like that kind of very genuine smile. And I'm like, mm, you know, just being like, mm. and I'm looking around the graveyard. And then I realize that there's a filming crew there. And then when they sat the two older guys down and started interviewing them in front of the camera, it just clicked and I'm like, no way, come on. I almost didn't stop in Waterbury. So out of all of the times I could have gone there, I don't think they even really live near there. I think they just brought Ben and Jerry there to film near the graveyard. They seemed really nice though. I was most excited for Stowe, Vermont for this trip, mostly because I really wanted to go to Vermont and Stowe just seemed like pinnacle Vermont teen town. I have been driving around Stowe ever since I got here for hours. It's impossible to find any ugly spots. The first thing I did was go check out something that they call Emily's Bridge. There are so many people there. Supposedly what drew me and I think everybody else to it is that it's like haunted and there's a legend behind it. But then I go and read the plaque, most stereotypical stupid ghost story. A woman was left at the altar. She killed herself because she was so sad and desperate for her husband. And now she haunts the place like waiting for him. Stupid bullshit. And then under it, it said like, by the way, this is how this story was created. And people are there like wearing black and laying flowers. And like this sign is just like, it's all fake. I just had to go to the bank and get quarters so that I could take a shower. This is about to feel really good and I hope it wakes me up because I want to go downtown, but I'm extremely tired. I'm going to go hit Stowe, see what shops and breweries and maple syrup they have. I try to get into this place called Idle Time Brewery, which is a very touristy, like everyone's trying to go there. I guess I find out. I say, you know, just party of one. Can I just sit at the bar? There's a little line to sit at the bar. Like, that's not why I came to Stow, this cute mountainous town. Idle Time Brewery is a great place if you want to go see ankle wedge boots and hats like this. Not that I'm ragging on it. I love this hat, but it's not really what I was looking for, so I went to an Irish bar called Burt's right down the road. It looked a lot more comfortable. My family and I have always gone to like local bars back at home, so I kind of felt more comfortable. I wasn't expecting to pull up though, and everybody's just sitting out on the porch, smoking and talking. Everybody clearly knows each other. There are two dogs that immediately see me and start barking. One lady goes, oh, don't worry, they're just, they're all bark. I'm like, ah. I'm clearly out of place. I'm dressed up because I thought I was going to touristy places. I'm wearing like almost all white. And everyone's watching me as I come in. It's so much smaller than I thought it would be. Bar takes up most of it. Everyone turns and stares at me when I get in. Oh boy, like I can't just turn around now. That'd be so awkward. So I went up to the bartender, tried to look fearless, and I said, I've never been to Vermont. I heard beer is big here. What do I get? Only one spot left at the bar between these two big guys. All right, I'll just I'll just shimmy in this little space here on this stool. Bartender's great. He's giving me all these options. I'm pretending like I know what he's saying. I'm like, oh, am I just gonna awkwardly sit here while these locals talk around me all night? Like I have to. I have to make some effort. And then finally the one on my left is just like, so where are you in from? And I was like, I'm going on a, like a big trip. He's like, I'm from Boston. Really, I couldn't tell. All of a sudden, I had the whole bar going, no, 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 you take two down to 250. You go west on 110 and that'll get you the best views. No, 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 take 17. The tension was broken pretty quickly and I ended up being so glad I went there. They told me to go to drive through Barry, Vermont. Bar! Barry, I mean. Sorry, Barry. In Montiplier, Mr. Boston Man said, 
Yeah, berries, great. Great shops, great food. They got all that gay stuff. It's great. I also learned that Stowe is in kind of socio-economical war, is how he described it. It's way too expensive for most people to live in Stowe these days, so all the rich are coming in. Here these people are, who have been here for a while, blue collar jobs, and they're building these houses for rich people to steal their place in Stowe. So uh, yeah, he had some thoughts about that. I was doing a terrible Boston accent by the end of the night, which he got a kick out of. I was saying, I'm going to Concord. I met his wife. She makes trip itineraries for people. She had tons of recommendations because of that. Later, I met some younger local girls who thought it was so cool that I was traveling in my car, and they were like, if I didn't have kids, I would do that. Your kids won't mind. I had a fantastic time at that bar. If you go to Stowe or really any of these like small mountain times, don't go to the three hour wait overpriced touristy places.